most organisations around the world have been impacted in some way by COVID-19. Early research has shown that women have been negatively affected more than men for a variety of different reasons, including job losses, reduced hours, resignations due to homeschooling of children and closure of childcare facilities. We want to find out from leaders themselves how the pandemic has affected women's progress towards equality in corporate Australia and around the world, and whether women's leadership opportunities have suffered a setback or not. Before we get into this podcast, I just want to talk about International Women's Day. On March the 5th, CFA Societies Australia is proud to host a live presentation with guest speaker, the Honourable Julie Bishop, to celebrate success and raise awareness of various issues affecting women locally and globally, such as education, health and job opportunities. The 100% Project will be sponsoring this event and you can find out more information on our website, the100percentproject.com.au. You might want to think about attending either physically or virtually this event on March the 5th. Okay, so now let's get on to our podcast and meet our guest for this episode. My name is Hilary Lamb and I chair the 100% Project. We are a not-for-profit organisation and our vision is to see 100% of Australia's leadership potential, female and male, equally contributing to our social and economic future. So where are we on this path to this vision, and in particular, what impact has the current pandemic had on gender equality in the workplace? I'm speaking today with Matthew Gribble, who is the Regional Managing Director of the PAGE Group, headquarters in Sydney. Welcome, Matt, and thank you for speaking with me. Thanks, Hilary. Can you begin by telling us a bit about your role and your organisation, please? Yeah, absolutely. So PAGE Group is a FTSE listed, FTSE 250 uh, recruitment company. We're a global organisation. We've got some 6,000 consultants across 36 countries at last count. So the first question is, will leaders pay attention to gender equality as they rebuild their businesses after COVID-19? What's your view of this? Look, I, I think it, it's such an important agenda that I think the, the business community has, has gotten behind and certainly in an industry like recruitment where we, we see a very high female representation, it's a really important industry for us, an issue for us as an industry. And I, I don't think, certainly at Page Group, we're not going to take our eye off the ball when it comes to this important female uh, empowerment agenda. So do you think leaders will want to see some tangible benefits if they're going to be focused on gender equality as they recover from COVID-19? Yeah, I think with as with any strategy that you're employing within your business, you want to see a, a return on investment. The return on investment that we get from our investment in our female workforce, our female leaders is is, um, is, is very tangible. We, we've done a number of things over, over a number of years to drive that from uh, the way we manage maternity leave within our businesses and, and moving to an, an industry best practice there through to the training and development, coaching and mentoring of our female uh, professionals. And we're seeing increasing re- return on that uh, with every passing year. We've worked with you on a few different occasions and we know that Page Group is extremely supportive of family issues. What specifically have you done or are planning to do in your business to ensure the focus on gender equality is maintained during COVID-19, which may be a little bit different? Look, I think COVID-19 is an interesting one in that it, it presents challenges for many businesses from a, a pure P&L perspective. But if we look at the way that we, we do business and many businesses are now operating, the the ability to work in a more agile environment, so working from home with remote access, where by virtue of the, the, the nature of that way of working, one needs to be more focused on outcomes um, than being present in the office um, on output than, I guess, typical KPIs that some people might be measured upon. And, and I actually think this is a real positive for the way people work, the way parents work. I'm a parent, my wife works full time and we've got four children under the age of 11. And COVID, we have had them doing homeschooling, which presented some challenges when you're working full time at the same time from home. But the, the remote access that I have from Paige, my wife works at UNICEF, the remote access that she had there meant that we could juggle 
those parental responsibilities as well as work slightly different hours and but get the job done and get it done really well. So in a strange kind of way, I feel like COVID is going to be helpful in showing businesses around the world, really, that there is a different way of working that perhaps supports parents in general, but obviously with uh, women shouldering more parental responsibility in the world that we live in still than than fathers for, for the most part. I think that is really beneficial for the way our female professionals and leaders can work in our business and other businesses. Mm. So a lot of businesses struggled to allow the people or give them the right tools and resources to work remotely at the beginning of COVID-19. So how easily did you at the Page Group manage that transition to home working? And is it something that you're planning to maintain in the future as a, as a benefit to, especially to parents and women in particular? We managed the transition to that remote working quite seamlessly by virtue of a big investment in recent years of cloud-based products like Microsoft Teams that enable connectivity without being physically present with one another. So the, the, the cut across was done really, really well. We got a lot of positive feedback from the team on that. And it, it, it taught me that there is a different way of working. I, I think at times my, my work habits were too office-based and I've seen the productivity that can come from this dynamic working approach that we're now embracing. And I think that will continue on into the future. Yeah, it, it's. I think that the, the office has a has an has a important place in any business, certainly a professional services business, but we, we've seen great productivity from people working remotely. And I, I fully plan to utilise that moving forward, not just in response to COVID. So do you think you personally will be working from home a bit more? Yeah, absolutely. We're giving people the ability to choose and empowering them to to work more flexibly. And I work in the office a good few days a week, and and then on days where I want the 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 focus on perhaps more strategic issues and stuff that doesn't require me to interact with the team as much, I will um, work from home. We've been advocating, I guess, for gender equality in more. Uh, corporations around Australia. So we've been advocating for remote working for quite some years. COVID has obviously forced the issue and given more people the opportunity to do that. But one of the issues we found was that the line managers struggled to performance manage, to mentor, to coach their people, their teams. Has this something that's come up within Page Group, do you know? That's a common objection, if you like. What if we had five new team members in that team that they, they couldn't possibly work from home? And I think when, the more you discuss that, the the more you realise what is possible in a remote working um, capacity. I think there's stuff that you can do that works really well in the office. And I think there's stuff that you can do really well at home. And, and it's a case of having the conversations I'm having with my leaders are, well, let's look at that. Let's break that down. And newer people that are in that training and development phase can learn from home. And and one of the great examples that COVID's provided for me to underline that with the people I'm, I'm talking to is my kids. My kids had never re- studied remotely. They from one day to the next, moved into a home learning environment. And with Google Docs and some great teachers, and my kids kept learning. Uh, And and, and I really, I I thought that was great. I remind my people that, you know what, working remotely is not a second best option to being in the, the, the office. We've got to make that work for us as well as being in the office work for us. It's interesting, isn't it, is we're learning something alongside our children for a change rather than leading the way and then coaching them through it. I think it's probably the reverse has been the situation in some instances that the kids are handling this better than some of the adults. So I was reading an article from Melinda Gapes that she's saying that we demand more from our leaders as we start emerging from COVID-19. We need to expect more. And one of the quotes I've got here is that the way to build back is to put women straight at the centre because guess what? They're already at the centre. And she was referring to things like childcare, aged care, homes, running the family, etc. I guess the question is, should we go further than just looking at gender equality? Should we prioritise women's issues more? Should we put them at the forefront? So it's harder to separate work from home now, especially during the pandemic as we're working from home. As we rebuild organisations and life in general, should be giving more focus on women's issues than that we have before, even prioritising it 
in advance of just gender equality. Some of those issues you raised there are great enablers of uh, gender equality and female equality in the, the, the workplace. When childcare was suspended and more females or the brunt of that in the primary carer roles, I think statistically. And I think we've, we absolutely need to put issues like that at the centre and say, okay, well, what are we going to do about removing that bias, that levelling that playing field? A lot of reports, significantly Bain, McKinsey reports, they actually have demonstrated with their research that equal management teams outperform those led by either majority female or majority male. So, at this point in time, it's really important that gender equality is not missed, it's not overlooked as businesses start to recover. And I think expecting more from leaders, maybe some risk-taking, taking some chance on some appointments that may not necessarily have gone through in the first instance, maybe that will benefit us in the long run from uh, the page group. Have there been any silver linings that have come out of the, the pandemic? The pandemic's hit the, the recruitment industry pretty hard, so it's hard to see the silver linings just yet. I think the silver linings, if, if I was pushed on that point for us, would be that opening our eyes to a new way of working, which I think engages our, our workforce even more than the way we worked in the past, the ability to choose what works well in the office and take advantage of that from an office-based perspective and then what do I do well from home and, and do that. So I think that was a real positive. We're a large global corporation and, and we have a strong balance sheet and, and funding lines. So we're able to invest through the, the cycle. That doesn't mean that we, we invest without you know, very careful consideration. But through this downturn, a lot of our industry are facing greater challenges than us from a sort of a sustainability perspective from a financial point of view. So certainly for, for the people working for me, the sustainability of the organisation has been a real silver lining. And I think it's helped people from a mental health perspective, from taking a long-term view. They're, they're not sitting there going, are we going to be here from one day to the next, which unfortunately is the position of, of, of a lot of smaller businesses that are out there at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, a lot of mental health issues, as you say, have occurred from people losing their jobs and not having that longer term view of that, at least they will have a job and an income at the end of it. So as a leader in a recruitment and talent acquisition organisation, have you had any anecdotal evidence of what any of your clients, how your clients may be approaching any of this or, or have they been strictly just focusing on recruitment? I don't believe I've seen uh, this agenda, the female agenda, getting lowered on the priority listing. That That's for sure. Indeed, I've seen the opposite. Obviously, I can't name organisations here, no. but a large Australian corporation came to us in the early stages of, of COVID-19, actually, and said, we think there's an opportunity for us to go out and, and find some great female talent in this market. We think we've got something really good to offer. This is an organisation that's in a space that is benefiting from the downturn and they took the opportunity to go out there proactively to the market and and seek to attract some great female talent which was a, an important agenda item for them they needed more representation in their leadership ranks from a female perspective so that was one really great example of an organization taking a proactive stance when i'm out there talking to my clients at the moment and we're talking about a brief, it is very common that the desire to have real diversity, which is not just gender diversity, but gender diversity is always high up on that list in the recruitment process and the shortlisting process is, is something that's very much tabled. A bit of an aside question, when you are talking to your clients about recruitment, do you offer any suggestions or advice about having equal uh, number of candidates, so male and female candidates in any you know list, any short list so, that you provide to them? Yeah. Every briefing with a client is, is, is typically quite different, but we're certainly big advocates on the value of diversity. A common questioning that we'll run through with a client will be to get a breakdown of their leadership team. We're often recruiting for leadership teams, and, and that prompts a good conversation that we will always have around diversity. Okay, this is your leadership team at the moment. What are your diversity objectives within that? We're obviously well-versed in the statistics around whether it's gender diversity, ethnic diversity, all of the forms of diversity, and be able to talk to them around running a recruitment process that, that captures 
real diversity and the benefit that that subsequent hiring decision and the diversity that that brings if it's done time and time again and, and actually delivers diversity across these senior leadership teams, which is still lacking in many industries. But if they commit to that, you can't guarantee that the first time they do it will have a diverse hire, but if they commit to doing it consistently, then the diversity of these leadership teams should Im- improve and the, the benefits of that we'll share with our clients as a matter of course, absolutely. Yeah, that sounds good. At least you're asking the question and making them perhaps think a bit more about it and um, offering up some good female talent, which again, sometimes is a question as where do we find the females? How do we attract them? There's one question you talked about sustainability in your organisation and, and trying to keep your employees during COVID. Have you found that you have lost many women in your organisation through resignation or people needing to take time out for parenting or aged care issues? Have you had many females leave your business? 2020 has been a particularly challenging year for a lot of businesses. Recruitment industry is no exception and we're no exception within the, the recruitment industry. So we've seen some people that have chosen to leave the business and obviously we've made some structural changes during this period as well. We look very closely at our, our female and, and, and male representation within the business at all levels and we, we haven't seen that reduced from a female participation perspective at all during the, the downturn. So yes, we've seen people leave and yes, we've seen females leave within that, but statistically we have um, improved our ratios during that period of time. I know at the Page Group you have some very strong family-friendly and female-friendly strategies throughout your business, so I'm sure that you will all be doing your best to retain that female talent. Yeah, at the start of the the crisis, the the first objective we had was we wanted to protect our Page people. We wanted to protect our our, our organisation and we wanted to protect our community. And so we haven't gone through and had a cut and burn strategy of cutting heads drastically. We think we protected our organisation and by doing the work that we do, which is all about getting people great jobs, we're playing our part in the community as well. And and that certainly supports the the, the female agenda because that's something that we talk to all of our clients about uh, from a diversity point of view. Matt, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for the opportunity to be part of the podcast. I would just add that if there is any female professionals or leaders out there that are looking for opportunities at the moment, whether you are found yourself not working at the moment or you're in a job but you're looking for that next challenge, we'd love to talk with you. We are very passionate about finding great opportunities for candidates in the market and I welcome the the opportunity to refer you through to one of my team members. Wonderful. Thanks, Matt. I hope you found today's episode useful. If you would like to find out more about our work and access our free research, just go to our website, the100percentproject.com.au. And just to let you know, if you're an emerging female leader in Australia, We're excited to share that People Measures, in partnership with The 100% Project, is opening registrations for the next WILD program, or Women in Leadership Development. This program takes women on a deep dive to discover their powerful self. WILD is designed to look at the challenges of leadership through a gender lens, further develop leadership skills, establish a unique voice, and build enduring connections with WILD colleagues. People Measures has proudly opened applications for this year's WILD program, the first of which commences in March 2021. To register or to find out more, please go to peoplemeasures.com.au forward slash wild. So until next time, thanks for listening.